right now on five on your side at 10. Storm chances. We have them overnight into Thursday night. When and where the most rain is expected to fall and why some of us may see very little in our rain gauge. A grieving mother demands justice. Somebody just took them away just like that. Tonight, what we're learning about the two men randomly gunned down on a Metro bus and the other crime the suspect is accused of committing hours before opening fire. Our top story, a 14 year old boy stabbed to death in broad daylight. Tonight, a neighborhood in disbelief and the school on high alert. Tonight, police are searching for the person responsible. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Kelly Jackson. The stabbing happened just after three this afternoon on Horde Avenue, which is down the street from Jenny's Junior High, where the teen attended. Brent Solomon is live in Jenny's tonight with reaction from stunned neighbors, Brent. Who would do this and why? Those are the questions left with neighbors here tonight. As police here work to get answers, a local family mourning the loss of a 14 year old boy. Crime tape and cop cars flood the 2400 block of Horde Avenue just after three in the afternoon. I was coming home from work and realized I couldn't get that way, so I had to go all the way around. And now that I'm here, I just found out that someone has been stabbed. A 14 year old stabbed to death right on this street. Another kid that we didn't lost. She says her grandson goes to Jennings Junior High, the same school as the 14 year old victim. My grandson knew the young man. And as I was questioning him, this, he got so teary eyed. So I had to stop questioning him about the situation. School resource officers quickly arriving to the scene. They immediately began life saving measures and attempts to stabilize him until EMS arrived. Authorities rushed him to the hospital where he died. At this time, no motive and no suspects identified. Five on your side noticed a crying teenager being taken into questioning, yelling out, quote, I didn't do anything. Neighbors believe there was a group of people of different ages on scene when there was some type of confrontation. We heard one adult telling police she tried to stop it before the situation escalated. Investigators realize the impact a crime like this can have on those who knew the teen. Another thing is that we'll be working with the school district to ensure that the student body has the resources they need in reference to uh, counseling and stuff like that in regards to this tragic event. It just hurt my heart to know that a young man has lost their life. Sources tell me an adult picked up that 14 year old student early from school today. Within the past hour, I heard from the superintendent who tells me they have reached out to the family to offer support and there will be crisis counselors at the school tomorrow. Police here plan to step up patrols outside of Jennings Junior High. Live in Jennings, Brent Solomon, five on your side. And this deadly stabbing happened just four days after a Hazelwood East student was critically injured in an off campus fight. The disturbing video of Friday's fight has gone viral. A 15 year old girl is now being held by juvenile courts on assault charges. A hearing could determine if she should face charges as an adult. Turning now to our weather, storms could develop overnight and you could hear some rumbles of thunder. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell is tracking those storm chances and a Wednesday warm up in his weather first forecast. And you know, Mike, we're not going to see what's been happening east of Kansas City, west of Columbia, where they've had a lot of hail tonight. Not here, though. In fact, pretty quiet around St. Louis. Those high clouds starting to thicken a little bit. The thunderstorms developing out along the Missouri River this evening. Strongest ones have been closer to Kansas City. One lone cell moving down there towards Joplin at this point. But the ones we'll have to watch, the ones out here around Kansas City. Here's the deal. As they're coming towards St. Louis, they're moving into air that's not as juicy, not as friendly for storms. And so we think the showers and rumbles of thunder, what's left of it will come through St. Louis between about 2.30 and 5.30 tomorrow morning. And then after that, the rest of tomorrow likely is quiet around the St. Louis area. There will be another storm chance as we head into Wednesday evening, especially to our north, and then the potential for Thursday evening storms. We're going to look at future cast and tell you why and where the concerns are for severe weather over the next few days. See you in about 15 minutes, Kelly. All right, Scott.
We are learning more tonight about two innocent riders police say were shot and killed on a Metro bus in Berkeley yesterday afternoon. New tonight, Robert Townsend spoke to loved ones of both men who were just trying to make it home. Kelly Jaron, Jackson Craig, and Jorge Contour Pinzon never knew each other. Both got on a Metro bus, and those who love them cannot believe they never made it off the bus alive. I'm so hurt. A heartbroken Sharon Jackson is in shock. It's so hard. It's hard to take. The Olivet mom cannot believe her 34-year-old son, Jaron Jackson Craig, whom she last saw two days ago, was shot and killed while riding a Metro bus in Berkeley Monday afternoon. He's gone for the rest of my life. What mother want to bury their kid before she goes? Police say Anthony Frazier blocked the bus with a car he carjacked earlier in Bell Fountain neighbors and shot at it. They say Frazier first shot 37-year-old Jorge Contour Pinzon because he, quote, looked at him the wrong way. Witnesses told police Frazier fired into the bus, then got on it and fired more shots. His family says Jaron Jackson Craig suffered a gunshot wound to his chest and died. Why, Jared? Why? He never bothered nobody. She says her son was on the Metro bus heading home to Olivet from a job interview. Relatives say Jaron was looking forward to starting his new factory position next week. His mom froze when she saw him in a hospital bed. And I just saw my baby laying there. And all I could do was just call his name, kept saying Jaron. I figured if I say it loud enough, he'll get up. Somebody just took him away just like that. It's just so shocking. Jaron's grieving grandmother is St. Louis gospel singer and legend Zella Jackson Price. Like I said, I've lost others, but I've experienced losing somebody instantly and you expecting them home. I'm just asking the Lord to give me strength. A close friend tells me Jorge Contour Pinzon was also a nice guy just trying to make it home to Maryland Heights. He moved to St. Louis a year ago from Columbia, where he previously worked as a bus driver. Tonight, police are also looking for the man who opened fire on another Metro bus. Investigators released this video in hopes of identifying the gunman who fired several shots. This happened on March 5th around 10.30 p.m. along North Hanley and Benita Park. One person was hit by gunfire and suffered non-life-threatening injuries. If you recognize this man, you're asked to call police. We have a sad update tonight to a deadly house fire in Wright City. Five in your side has learned a three-month-old girl who was rescued from that home early Friday morning has died. Her 23-year-old mother also died. The baby's father was critically injured. The Missouri State Fire Marshal's Office has ruled the cause of the fire as accidental. Tonight marks one year since two Herman police officers were shot in the line of duty. Detective Sergeant Mason Griffith died from his injuries, and Officer Adam Sullentrop still has a long road to recovery. Five on your side's Laura Barcheski is in Herman tonight, where a candlelight vigil was held in their honor. We come together to honor Officer Adam Sullentrop and the ultimate sacrifice made by Detective Sergeant Mason Griffith. March 12th, 2023. A day that shook this community to the core. On that day, Officer Adam Sullentrup and Detective Sergeant Mason Griffith responded to a Casey's gas station for a disturbance. That's where a man named Kenneth Simpson fired shots at them and took off running. He ended up hiding in a nearby home for hours in a standoff with police. He was later arrested with Mason's handcuffs. Herman Police Chief Marlon Walker says he remembers vividly receiving that call that two of his officers were shot in the line of duty. It's just been a kind of a difficult year, but we've been getting through and it's just uh, you know, waking up today, just thinking of what happened a year ago today, just um, kind of a shock and didn't think this would happen in my career that fortunately it did. Chief Walker says it's amazing to see this community come together for both families and continue to support them. It's amazing. That's what Herman is. Uh, that's why I've been here my whole career for 20 years and just the people here and uh, just outstanding and very supportive of law enforcement and service personnel all around. A chaplain for Herman First Responders says Mason was carrying a cross just like this one the day he was shot and killed. And now it has a very special meaning for all the first responders here. He was baptized, um, I think, about two weeks before 
before uh, all this happened. And um, it was amazing because every time that I'd see him, he'd always pull his cross out and I'd share, share the cross with him. And uh, we try to give all the officers one of these crosses. I have given out several thousand. The community as a whole says their sacrifice will never be forgotten. It was a lie, but now I see. Reporting in Herman, Laura Barcheski, Five on Your Side. The Herman Police Department says Officer Solomon Trump is still in recovery. There are several memorials in the works to honor both officers. Tonight, a woman from the UK is out of the ICU weeks after being dragged by a car in the Grove neighborhood. It's a story that's made international headlines. This happened in the early morning hours of February 25th. Ellie Bentley ducked between two cars near Manchester and South Taylor after hearing gunfire. But one of those cars took off, dragging over several blocks. Workers at the Platypus Bar saw her lying in the street and quickly jumped into action. We, we were the first responders at that point, so we grabbed a, a bag of towels just right here by the bar, and we fully expect to, to you know, try to treat a gunshot wound. Um, that's th the first thing on our mind. And then, of course, we, we realized that it was a very, very different situation. The driver, Deontay Taylor, is charged with leaving the scene of an accident causing physical injury. Tonight, one of the largest animal shelters in our area is putting out an urgent plea. Stray Rescue of St. Louis says its shelter is bursting at the seams, critically overcrowded with pets who are waiting for loving homes. Now the group is asking for people to either foster or adopt a cat or dog. The nonprofit rescues abused, abandoned, and ne neglected animals on a daily basis. But because there is no available space, the group has been forced to put a pause on rescues. It's a stray problem. Um, animals are being dumped and we always try to help. It, it's a spay and neuter problem at the end of it. it. There's a lot of contributing factors. If you're interested in adopting or fostering a pet, Stray Rescue is holding an adoption event this Sunday at its headquarters, 2320 Pine Street from 11 to 2. New clues tonight in the search for a missing Mizzou student in Nashville, Tennessee. I just need to know where my son is. The desperate pleas of his parents as police ramp up their search. Kicking the tires on a new car. Tonight, Consumer Reports puts dozens of makes and models to the test to point you in the right direction. As we track our storm chances for the next couple of days, we'll time out who stands the best chance of stronger storms. That's in about seven minutes. New video tonight showing a University of Missouri student in downtown Nashville shortly before he disappeared Friday night. Secur security footage shows 22 year old Riley Strain crossing the street near the Cumberland River just blocks from his hotel and the bar that kicked him out. The Mizzou senior was in Nashville for a fraternity trip. His family drove to the city from Springfield, Missouri to search for him. I just need to know where my son is. <laughs> We talk every day, multiple times a day. Oh my God, this is the longest I've ever gone without talking to him. Riley's a very identifiable young man. He's 6'7". He's 155, 160 pounds. Um, blonde hair, blue eyes. Nashville Metro Police say they continue to pursue tips and leads. They conducted a helicopter search of the area. Discouraging news tonight on inflation. Consumer prices ticked up 3.2% last month over last year. That's slightly higher than expected. This means the Fed could push back plans to lower interest rates. Well, buying a new car can be stressful and expensive. However, armed with expert information, it doesn't necessarily have to be. Tonight, Consumer Reports is putting new cars to the test to gauge things like performance, fuel economy, and the ease of installing car seats. Consumer Reports auto testing team puts every car it buys through more than 50 tests, comparing 250 models for owner satisfaction and reliability to determine this year's top picks. This year, our top 10 includes four hybrids, three plug-in hybrid electric vehicles or PHEVs and one EV. That's significant because it shows that the market has shifted towards electrification and that these models can best their gas only competitors. And the results for 2024? The Toyota RAV4 Prime takes everything drivers love about the super popular RAV4 and adds the benefits of a plug-in hybrid, which provides 42 miles of electric only driving before the gasoline motor kicks in. CR found the Prime is quieter and smoother than the standard RAV4, and it's quicker. 
the Prime went 0 to 60 a full two seconds faster than the gas only model. Another standout Toyota SUV, the three row Highlander hybrid, has key safety features, solid predicted reliability, and great fuel economy at 35 miles per gallon overall. From Subaru, the Forester and redesigned Crosstrek are also top picks. Both have secure handling, good fuel economy, and a wide range of active safety features. The redesigned Toyota Prius added more horsepower and performance, plus the availability of all-wheel drive. And the plug-in Prius Prime provides 39 miles of pure electric driving with 43 miles per gallon when the hybrid engine kicks in. If you're looking for a truck, the Ford Maverick and Maverick Hybrid provide much of the functionality of a pickup at a fraction of the size and cost. CR found both versions of the Maverick offer impressive maneuverability and a roomy crew cab interior. And if reliability is top of your list, it's hard to do better than the Toyota Camry Hybrid. The Camry Hybrid receives top marks in CR's reliability data. But it also performs well in our fuel economy tests, gets 610 miles per tank of gas, and earns a sky-high road test score in our on-track evaluations. The BMW X5 and X5 plug-in hybrid are CR's top luxury SUV choice. Both versions feature immaculate cabins and a premium driving experience. And if you're looking for a sporty drive that won't break the bank, CR says the Mazda 3 was a standout. With 191 horsepower, its engine packs more punch than most rivals and has an impressively premium interior for the price point. Schnucks is rolling out its new smart carts. Caper carts are powered by artificial intelligence and allow you to bag your groceries while you shop and pay from anywhere in the store. It can also track your spending and savings and even look up where items are located. Right now, they're only available at the Twin Oaks and Lindenwood stores. Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell rejoins us now with that weather first forecast. And are you saying maybe not such a bumpy night? You know, I don't think most of us around the St. Louis area are going to see that much rainfall and maybe a rumble of thunder, but certainly not severe weather. Those options aren't on the table for St. Louis, so we can rest easy overnight, although we certainly could use a good rain across the area. I don't think we're going to see all that much overnight tonight. Lambert's pretty quiet right now. Storms, they are still out to our west. There's that one cell, actually a couple of them now, going out of Springfield down towards Joplin, but it's really this area focused in east of Kansas City. You can tell as the storms are approaching Columbia, they're tending to weaken a little bit, but the storms still are producing some larger hail out here across parts of western Missouri. Again, that is to our west. By the time what's left of that makes its way towards St. Louis, it's more like a few rumbles and a few scattered showers, and that would be about it. And then tomorrow we'll play a waiting game, waiting for the next opportunity for some rain. So through the overnight hours, we'll have the chances here as we head towards 2 to 4, 4 30, 5 o'clock in the morning for at least some scattered action to roll through St. Louis. I think it's going to be fairly light, and at the end of the day, or in this case, the end of tomorrow morning, there probably won't be much in most of our rain gauges as we go into tomorrow afternoon, kind of variably cloudy that breeze out of the south. Warm fronts to our north we will watch tomorrow evening for the potential north of St. Louis for a fair number of showers and thunderstorms. Odds are we're going through most of tomorrow and into tomorrow evening without rain around St. Louis and even into the overnight hours. For Wednesday night into Thursday morning, most of the action remains to our north and northwest. We're still warm starting Thursday close to 60. We'll probably top out around 80. Notice a cluster of storms sliding by to our north. Another larger area of showers and thunderstorms farther to the south. So along this front, as it pushes in during the overnight hours Thursday, we'll likely see at least a few showers and thunderstorms. How strong? Well, we think the area is to the north closer to the storm track. And farther to the south, where the moisture is better, we'll see the strongest storms. How many of them? Well, for us, isolated to scatter. Now, the Storm Prediction Center has quite an area blanketed here by a severe risk. It's a Category 1 risk for St. Louis, but that, again, is conditional on storms even developing. That's why we have not colored Thursday as an orange day in St. Louis because we're not sure it's worthy of a weather alert day. Many of us may not see much rain at all hmm. over the next couple of three days. Very limited. We're in a drought. And in the yeah. 80s, Thursday. 80-ish, yeah. Scott, right. thanks.
Sports is next with Frank. The Billikens showed some heart. The Cardinals showed some offense. And a Mizzou quarterback has found a new NFL home. This Five on Your Side Sports Report is sponsored by Telly Tire and Auto Centers, driving your way since 1942. I don't blame you if you think big deal, slew beat Rhode Island in the first round of the A-10 tourney. I see it differently, though. I see a college basketball team that has had a painful season. The injuries and the 19 losses have been brutal. But here they are, undermanned, with a coach under fire, and they've won four out of their last six, including a thriller today in Brooklyn. The veterans came out smoking Gibson Jimerson with three of his 26 points. T.J. Hargrove hit a couple of bombs to end the first half, and the Billikens led it 41-32 to at the intermission. Then a freshman shall lead. Sion Medley sees daylight, runs to it. We are tied at 67. And right after that, Medley, who had nine assists and one turnover, will spoon-feed Gibson Jimerson for the bucket. Rhode Island had a few chances to tie it at the buzzer. No! And the Bills survive in advance with a 74-71 to 71 victory. Duquesne is next on Wednesday night. Taking flight. Card Spring Training. Sponsored by Wood Basement Systems. All you need to know about the Cardinals' outfield situation is this. There's a chance that Alec Burleson could be their most experienced starter in Dodger Stadium on March 28th, and he's played in just 123 games. That's how things are evolving. Burleson homered against the Red Sox today in an 8-6 to victory. If Lars Nootbaar can't go, Alec is the man. And why not? He's hitting 407 with a staggering 1040 OPS. He lost about 10 pounds and looks more athletic. However, not quite as athletic as the guy who played next to him in center today. You know him, Mr. Scott. He went three for three today with two runs and a stolen base. Victor Scott is now hitting 370. Tommy Edmond is hurt. Dylan Carlson is not hitting. Scott is going to make any decision to send him down a real difficult one. This is the most tempting subject within the Cardinal Spring training. What are they going to do with him? Because he's really checking a lot of boxes. He's got to make them not like him, and that's impossible right now. I mean, this guy's doing everything that you're asking him to do. And here's the other thing, Frank. He's a really good defender. And if you think about the fact that he was a gold glove winner for all the minor leagues last year, not just double-A AA or triple-A, all minor leagues, he was a gold glove center fielder. So he knows a little bit about that, too. Start the man. We're inside three weeks until the Battle Hawks kick it off for real on March 30th. Coach Anthony Beck is putting the players through hard practices, and as you can tell, he's getting into it himself. He's a former NFL player. The coach is treading that fine line between giving his key guys enough work to stay sharp while resting them to come out of the gate fast. It's a tricky, a tricky deal on how to do that, but we have a good plan in place, and and uh, you're right. I, I think it's really shown how that has come together fairly quickly and hopefully allows us to start much, much faster than we did last season. Five years ago, the Giants drafted Daniel Jones instead of Drew Locke in the first round. Now the two will compete against each other for the starting spot. Locke agreed on a one-year deal for $5 million with New York. The former Mizzou quarterback is now 27 years old. He's been a part-time starter with the Broncos and Seahawks, and no one has ever doubted his arm talent. And I think the most impactful free agent signing in terms of helping a team get to the Super Bowl is Derrick Henry to the Ravens. Two years, $16 million bucks, a four-time Pro Bowler who once had a 2,000-yard rushing season. What a dynamic duo in that backfield with Henry and Lamar Jackson. And my glowing recommendation of Derrick Henry has nothing to do with the fact that he helped my fantasy football league team, <laughs> the Stallions, win three consecutive I mean, they were they, they, the Ravens were in the AFC Championship yeah. game as it was without him. So. Who are you going to guard? I mean, yeah. you've got to guard one of them. They're just, that's a, a duo that will be unstoppable, yeah. I think. Frank, thanks. Thursday's focused on the loo. The deals and tasty treats in the 314 this week. Well, Thursday is March 14th, and here in the loo, it's known as 314 Day in honor of the area code. The Cardinals will be celebrating with a flash sale. Tickets for Monday through Thursday home games in April will be sold for just $3.14. 
The sale runs Thursday from 9 a.m. until 9 p.m. on the Cardinals website. The food truck Tasty Burger is cooking up its STL burger this week. It's topped with a fresh slice of Provel and handmade tea wraps and marinara sauce huh? from on Nick the burger? Elenina's in Overland. That's a lot. And Emos is teasing a big STL collab for 314 Day, according to a cryptic social media post. It appears the Square Beyond Compare will incorporate old Vienna red hot riblets on and, its menu. And we're compiling a full list of events and deals taking place Thursday. Just text 314 to 314 425 5355. We'll send it straight to your phone. And there you have it. Five on your side at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. Be sure to start your day with Today in St. Louis at 4 a.m.